comfortable and we can talk to each other freely. Yes. That's interesting. Um, so it's, it's very obvious if you have um, Dima's phone number, you see her status, she's always uploading and you see that kind of bond that exists within them. Um, I'm going to ask Daddy the same question, but before going to um, Daddy, I want to ask, how did you arrive, Kamara? How did you guys arrive at that? What are the things? Because I know that maybe it started at some point. I, I don't want to, I don't want to push that, but I don't want to. So, okay, so ask, answer that question. How did you guys start? So that I will know what question to ask again. How did you get into that stage? Did it start from while you were growing or you just went into it? Are there times where you did not really like some of those things and you revolted, but eventually you were into it? So, so how, how is that? So throughout my childhood, I, I think it has, to a certain level, it has always been like that. Or well, I've always been close. We had like the typical mother, child parent relationship and everything we talk how, talk about school and things like that but like a major turning point in my relationship with my parents and my relationship with my family in general was um the quarantine period so we we're all like in the same close proxi proximity and everything really we were all bored so we looked for things to do we started doing things with each other started eating breakfast together every day, started working out together and everything. And all that just brought us closer together. We learned things that we didn't know about each other and got really comfortable because we're all in the same space for a long period of time. Oh, wow, interesting. So, so the bond grew more closer during the um, pandemic. And um, it's so, it's so, funny how that some people so a lot of people discover that they did not have close they were not close as families during the pandemic they tried to be close and after everything everybody just drifted apart again so you are telling me now that you are able to sustain it and it is growing every day is that what you're saying yes yeah good thank you very much um thank you i i like the way you you've been answering the question very precise and interesting so, um, Daddy, I want to ask you the same question. What's your relationship with your parents? My relationship with my parents is quite, I would say, unique in terms of things that I've um, heard, if we want to compare. But I would say that it's very free, and it's something whereby my mom is actually my best friend, so I can talk to her about anything, basically. Um, whether it comes to joking about certain things, um, and she's she's basically put this thing where it's like there should be no fear yes there's a level of um respect and things like that but it's like you shouldn't be afraid to talk to your parents about anything because really as she's even said to me before and i've heard her tell other people that if your child can't come to you to ask you certain things they're going to ask other people and they're going to ask other people and those people might tell them things that are not necessarily true mm. so it's good to have that trust that bond that okay if sometimes i'm even waiting oh i can't wait to get home and i'll tell my mommy this we'll laugh about it and even with my dad the same thing it's just fun jokes and at the same time there's still still learning experience because you get to experience something firsthand you can go to your parents and you can talk to them about anything and even if it's they joke about it or they tell you oh no this is not right this is how this is this is what we believe in in our family it's still like a learning experience and you can go ask them rather than asking someone else and being deceived so uh, besides that it's like it's also fun and it's nice if you have this um sense of comfort that okay i'm at peace with my parents you know and i'm an only child so it's very important to me as well so um it's good to have people that you can talk to as well as knowing that okay your parents they're your parents you know they love you they provide for you but you can trust them and that's really what i think is really um cool about it thank you very much daddy um so like we said we are trying to create a village and we have selected, we, are, we have carefully selected these two girls from these two families because we understand what 
their family structure is like, or what their family setup is like. And um, we believe we can learn from this family as, and that's why we have carefully selected these two families. And I'm so excited that we have not made any mistakes. Like I said, it is for us to learn. If you don't have this kind of closeness with your children, it is for you to check to say that, okay, so where are we missing it? And these are the things we're going to be discussing this morning. Thank you so much, Kamara and Jade, for answering these questions intelligently and smartly. I appreciate the fact that your parents are intentional about their relationship with, the, with their children. Like Jade said, if your child cannot ask you questions, they will ask people outside. And you can't be sure the kind of response the people outside will give your child. If you have a family value and the person they are talking to outside is giving them or teaching them or inculcating the wrong value system into your children, you know that you are all going in different direction. And this is the reason why we are saying that we should have relationship, we should have close relationships with our children. Okay, so for the two of you, anyone can, okay, so I want um, Kamara, let's take it in that order. I want Kamara to, to respond. Are there times you feel your parents totally misunderstand your actions? And how have you been able to answer it? Are there times that uh, that's, that your me thing just wants to take over and um, you just feel they misunderstood you? And um, how have you been able to handle it? So, I'm not, I don't, that hasn't really happened like recently or like I can't really remember an instance where it happened, but a common example is that um, for some reason, my mom thinks that I like someone at every single moment of my life. Like I have a crush on someone. So anytime, I come to school and something, I come back home and something happened in school. And I'm like talking to her about my day and everything. And I mention a boy's name. She immediately starts going off about, oh, what's his name? See your new crush, something like that, something like that. But I, it's funny really, because um, that's not what happened. It's just like a joke. I was just talking to her about things that happened, but I like it. I appreciate that we can talk about things like this. And maybe mm. one day, if it actually happens, I'll still be able to go to her and it's not be weird or anything. Wow. Wow. Did you get that? Did you all get that? So she can freely talk about it here because she doesn't even have anything to hide. That's a kind of level of uh, openness that goes on. And she said something that is very profound, saying that even if her mom misunderstands it at that moment, she knows that, well, it's not, it's not the truth. I'm just talking like I'm talking to my girlfriend. So if I mention this boy's name, does not mean there's anything special. But did you get her resolution that, well, it means that eventually, if there's something like that, she will find it very free to say that, okay, mommy, that one that you have been waiting for, that gist that you have been waiting for, this is it. And this is so, so, so interesting. Thank you, Kamara, for being so open to us here. Jade, I want you to also respond to that question. All right, so for me, I would say, it would just be more so of not seeing eye to eye. There have been situations where I would maybe tell my mom something and I would have made a decision that she's not necessarily happy about or she doesn't exactly back. So sometimes it can lead to like just disagreements and things like that. That's why it's always good. I mean, she always tells me sometimes you need to like separate and take your own time away. Think about it. Then when you're calm, you can now tell me and explain like my mom always says, um, we, detach your emotions from the situation because if something has happened and you're upset about it, however you're feeling about it. When I tell her, it's like, 
sometimes when you're telling people things that have happened to you, you get angry as if the person that you're telling is the person that offended you. But that's not the case. And that only transfers aggression. So sometimes when you come, you then talk about it. And then she will tell me, oh, this is why I feel like you shouldn't have done this. And she'll explain her reasons. I'll explain mine. And it's more so a thing of, okay, she's older than me. She's gone through something like this before. She may have even made the same mistake. Hence why she's trying to get me to understand a certain reason why she did that. So it's, and it's also be, being patient and listening as well, because everyone has different perspectives as well as like the age gap. So the way that I would think would be very different from the way that she would think, especially in different situations. So it's more so of even sometimes it could just be a thing of you want to do something and your parents were like, no, but to you, there's actually nothing wrong in this. Like there's nothing wrong. And you know, there's nothing wrong. And even your parents too, they know that it's not even a big deal, but they're just saying no. So sometimes you actually just have to let it go. Then later, when you're maybe less upset about the situation, then you talk about it and ask like, okay, well, why couldn't I go? Because I've done this before. Or, you know, this isn't something that we don't, it's against what we stand for. And they'll just explain to you, sometimes you never even know, God may be, may be using them to protect you from something. So it's not always to like get angry or just fight like, oh, my mom, my dad, this is so annoying. It's like, you don't really know what, you, don't, you can't see the future. So them, for them, it's like, it's their way of protecting you, even though sometimes you may not understand and it's, it can be quite annoying sometimes, I must admit. But it's like, when you actually get to sit down with them and ask them, it, you get a clearer understanding, a clearer picture of why they did what they did. So communication is like really important. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful. This is so, so beautiful. Um, I, I want to start reading comments in the chat box, parents, or am I the only one that is excited here? Jade is saying something about how our mother is teaching her conflict management. How that when you get upset about something, you withdraw yourself, you detach yourself to think about it. And you learn to separate what has happened from your relationship with the person you had disagreement with. So this is also saying that we are supposed to be teaching our children how to manage conflict. They don't have to agree with everything we have to say. Those such things. This is so interesting and it's really getting deep in here. So now that we have a basic understanding of what the relationship is like, with these two amazing, amazing young girls, teenagers, and their parents, and the things they have learned so far with their relationship with their parents, I believe that um, when they start asking those, you're going to see from the perspective of, oh, okay, so that means this person, this is so normal for these girls, it's so normal for this age range. And you're going to understand that when your own daughter comes up with something like that you know that she's not weird you just know that it is normal for that age range and now we go into the main question the flyer says questions that teenage girls ask and um i want kamara to say something about this kamara so from your own perspective and from your interaction with other girls outside, what are those questions you think girls want to ask? That it's in them, they really want to talk to their parents about. They have a lot of, a lot of questions. Your parents have not shut you down, but there are some girls out there that their parents have shut their mouth. The society has judged. So we have a lot of policing and silencers in the society we're growing up. I am, an, I am a very good example. We all know that in this family meeting, I've been so vulnerable to mention things that had happened to me while growing up. And this is one of the things that has made us who we are, even as parents. And most of the times we project our fears to our children. And that is why we, by the time we are doing that, we do not know that we are unconsciously shutting them down. We are unconsciously policing them and that makes them keep quiet. That makes them go quiet. They, they decide to just keep quiet. Mommy will, not, mommy, mommy will not even, like what happened to Kamara? Kamara can decide to say that if I bring any gist home now, 
Mommy will just be like, she will just think it's my crush or something. You ask me, maybe I'm dating that person. Kamara can decide to keep quiet. And you know, these are, these are the things that we have done to silence our children at home. So Kamara, what are those questions? What are those things you know that are in the mind of girls your age that they really wish they can talk about, that they talk about when you are together in school or when you're hanging out? Thank you. Do you understand that question? Yes. All right. Yes, I do. So the main question that comes up when I'm talking to my friends and everything, what we, what we talk about when parents come up and childhood and stuff, so um, body image, right? Um, it's a popular topic that um, we try to advocate positive self-image between people and all. But um, I think from the general perspective of girls, they don't really feel comfortable with their body because when they wear things, they are wondering, oh, why doesn't my mom want me to wear this? Or is this, I'm comfortable in what I'm wearing, but let's say it's kind of revealing and something. And of course, parents want to protect their children. So they are like, no change and things like that. But I think most parents aren't really, don't feel like they need to give reasons for what they tell their children to do because, well, they're older, they're wiser, things like that. So they just tell their children what to do and expect them to just listen to them and uphold what they say. But we live in a world where, where a lot of resources are available to us. So we're curious, we want to understand why you want us to do something, right? So yes, when we ask questions about, oh, this particular cloth or about ourselves, our body image, we want you to tell us why you want us to do something or tell us why you don't want us to do something. Yes. Mm. I like the first one you picked, that's body image, the self image. If you, as parents, if you don't help your children to build that right from home, then there is problem. So Boku, I hope you are taking note of all those things because those are the things you're going to respond to. You're going to help us because I remember that while I was growing up, my older sister was always talking about my body. And so I grew up not liking my body shape. And um, I think I started liking my body shape. have all women in the house. I don't know if you have men in the house. Because we also know that the fathers are the first lovers of the female child. And this is why we be fathers to always come out for this kind of meeting. So Boku, please, I need you to start taking note of all this. So Kamara, is that the only thing you want to share? No. Okay. Um, so another question that comes up is um, like social life um social media and stuff were very um, attached to our phones and our devices we're always on social media and stuff and parents have this prejudice about mm. the internet and how all the bad things that we can learn from it and everything so um that's another topic that really comes up while um some parents don't allow their children to have phones early or everything. Like me, for example, I don't have a phone yet because, and I agree with the reason why my mom, the reason my mom has given me that um, I'm too young and that um, social media things, information is broad in social media. So it depends on what you pick from it and everything. And not everybody's wise enough or knowledgeable enough to pick the good things that they see, right? But other girls, like my friends and stuff, don't understand why they shouldn't have a phone when everyone has a phone and everyone is on social media and everything. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if everyone is still there. I think um, maybe the network cut her off. But um, I think what you just said is um, quite useful about the um, the mobile phone. I'm I'm taking notes, so I'll see if everyone can join in, and then I'll try to start to touch on some of the things you, you uh, you've raised. And I'm talking from a point of a mom this time around, not just you know from a professional angle, but just as a parent, as a mom who's got um, teenage children as well. So we'll see if everyone can join. If not, um, I'll just start to. Someone say, "Father, say here." Absolutely, I do appreciate. But what I'm just saying is, I am talking. Okay, so let me rephrase that. I am talking as a parent, not necessarily as you know a professional so um, that's the angle i'm coming from so i will be sharing as a as, um, as a parent i like the fact that um for this meeting what we've done is to get feedback there's so much that we do in terms of we teaching our children and we telling them do this and do that this forum or this meeting is all about the feedback that these children are giving us. It's like we're getting a performance review. It's a report card. And although we've picked people from families from the Institute and families that we do know that they have, you know, the, um, the, they have the kind of culture and the belief that our new village is trying to raise. But more importantly, what's happening in the outside world, because our children are gonna be interacting with this outside world. And I like how Kamara and Daddy are bringing in all the things that their friends are saying. So now that everyone's back, I'll allow to continue. So I was just you know, giving an overview of you know, the angle I'm looking at it from. I'm looking at it as a parent. I initially said as a mom, but someone corrected me to say fathers are here. So I'm looking at it as from the angle of a mom, not just from, as a professional, because you know, as a professional, you wanna be giving advice and all of that. So. They're talking to us and giving us feedback, and I'm going to be responding as a parent so that they can see our angle. So, yeah, now that you're back, over to you. Can you hear me? I'm not sure she can. If she can, but I, I can, I can hear her. Okay, I'll just con. Can you hear me, Abu? Yes, I, okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Thank you so much for standing in um, my network is really messing me up this morning um so um so i don't know as daddy responded to that question the questions we're raising no, daddy, no, have no, you yes. done that i i know camera was talking about um she mentioned body okay so i, I remember camera mentioned body language and the issue of um the social media they want to know the reason why you're telling them not to stay glued to their social media to their phones and all Thank you so much, Kamara. I, I really appreciate um, the perspectives, things you're bringing in. Okay, so Daddy, you want to respond to that question. What are those things that okay. girls raise? What are those questions that girls raise? Yeah, thank you. So I have so much to say about that. Um, firstly, I would say that one thing, if not, I'm sure many people have noticed this already, hopefully, is that as a child, not even just as a girl, maybe if your child, you're, um, daughter goes to an all girls school, but we spend as kids, especially as secondary school children, for those of us that are in secondary school, we spend majority of our life in school. That is for some nine to 10 hours a day, or if they're even in boarding school, that's basically just like months in school. So they're away in school and they are not constantly with, we're not even constantly with our parents. But one thing I would, and that's because, and that thing basically is, the fact that the fact that we're spending so much time with these people, it how it kind of forms how we think. That is why having a good relationship with your parents is so key because you would have been grounded in the way that you would move, the way that you would operate. Because you're going to meet so many people of so many different backgrounds, so many different beliefs. Because some people might even try to impose their own things on you and things like that. And I've heard my mom say she was she was in um, a meeting online, and she said something about how her own generation. It was, she's coming from a generation where it's like, okay, your parents will say do this and you just go and do it. But for us, this generation Z, it's like our parents will say, um, go and do this. And you're asking why? Not just because you were trying to be rude, but just because we're curious, like, why should we actually do this thing? And main, mainly the things that come up in terms of conversation with girls that I've spoken to in school is 
they want to talk about boys, they want to talk about fashion, they want to talk about following trends. Um, and some people, they even just want to, some of them, as in, they'll just talk about their parents, they're so angry, or oh, she never listens to me, or she never does this. Like, you just hear different things. I can't tell my mommy this. Um, they're, some of them are even afraid, they're just blatantly afraid of their parents. And some of them, it's more so they don't know how to be positive about things. They just have so much negative self-talk and that comes with their image. So for someone like me, it's more so the relationship that I have with my parents. I mean, if I like someone eventually, but it's not gonna be something like, oh, she's gonna, my mom or my dad is gonna pester me. If it comes out, it comes out because sometimes to me, the way that I've been trained and the way that I think, if I see a, a guy and I think he's fine, that's just it. Like it doesn't necessarily translate into um, a crush. And even my mom, like she tells me that sometimes that, like, oh, you know, this thing will blow over. And it does, it's never something that's serious. It's sometimes just for laughs. And sometimes if I have my yearbooks, you say, show me this boy's picture. And then we'll look at it, she'll even laugh. Uh, is it this one, you know? And it's just funny to be honest. So I can talk to her about things like that. When guys come up to me and they ask me certain things, I can go and ask her about it. So I know how to handle myself. She's even told me and told me about different kinds of guys and things like that. And that's good for protection because those people eventually will come up to you as a girl and you will know how to deal and handle them and even talk to some of them, not just um, in terms of romantically or things like that, but even in um, a working situation where you have to get a job done. And then in terms of fashion, it's just more so clothing, yes, in the school that I go to, a lot of girls are pretty much free to wear what they want whenever they go out with their friends, but obviously it's not excessive. So is the typical shorts, crop tops, um, just different designs of tops, jeans, flared pants. Where I am, girls are very stylish, they're very open with how they want to dress and things like that. But at the same time, that peer pressure comes for other girls when it's like, oh, I have to compete with her, which is not the case. And one thing that I've been taught, even by my parents alone, my dad, for example, he loves fashion. Like my dad just loves fashion so much. He has all the magazines, everything, GQ, all those things. And I literally can show, like I've so many times I've shocked with my dad. Like I like, I enjoy that because he also knows that, okay, daddy, do you like this? Especially when it comes to like dresses and things like that. I'm not really one to wear dresses, but if he picks it just for me, I tend to like it, even shoes, um, even my mom as well, very funky. So it's like, when I have an issue with that like, clothing, I can usually just ask them. I've gone to different parties and I'll, in the morning, I'll be like, oh, daddy, does this look nice? So it's like, the freedom is there. I can ask my dad, oh, do you think this looks nice? Sometimes my dad will even help me pair a whole outfits up. And that also comes in the fact that they've taught me that what works for you may not work for another person, not just in fashion, but that goes in every area of life because everybody's body type is different. Everybody looks different, you know? And it's also what makes you feel comfortable. So establishing that and just building that in children and in your children, I think is really important to understand that you don't have to dress like everybody else. And I don't even dress like most people. And when I wear my things, I get so many compliments because it's like, if we all start dressing like some everybody else, I'm sure we all have that experience. Even as parents, when you were in school, there's always this group of people that they just look like robots. Like they're all just so similar. So they're like a little gang. And there's no, that's why you need to learn that you can be part of things. You can have a good solid group of friends but your individuality is what makes you unique. It's beautiful to see, you know, to stand out. And yeah, sometimes maybe some people look at you funny, like, oh, why are you wearing that? But if it's what makes you happy, then so be it. And in terms of following trends and social media, social media, honestly, is not a bad thing. It's more so a blessing and a curse. Um, for me, I have a phone. However, it's managed. That's the key thing. Social media as well. I have an Instagram account, but I don't even go there to be honest. Not even that's even by choice. I just don't remember to go there. My mom runs it for me, so I would she would help me record videos. Um, I'll edit them, send them to her, and then on a schedule, maybe every two weeks, she'll just post something for me, and I'll put the caption there. And that is what has created a lot of opportunities for me. Social media. You know, I got I got invited to speak at different places because of social media, but she's managing it. So it's more so I don't really go there and see toxic things as well as as a child, as an individual. What's you yourself as a child, whenever you even have the opportunity to go online, whether it's Snapchat, whether it's Instagram, whatever it is, whatever you constantly feed yourself is what's going to come up on your feed. That's really it. So it's really up to you as um, having a responsibility. And in terms of my phone, even every night I submit my phone to my mom. I don't sleep with my phone in my room. 
you know, if by my mom is charging by her bedside, then in the mornings when I'm off to school, I take it with me in case of emergency, things like that. And I use it for my homework. It's just so effective, you know. In school as well, we have group chats for different subjects so we can talk. And it has made life a lot easier. A lot of communication goes on. Oh, did you forget your homework yesterday? Or oh, what's tomorrow? This, that, and the other. So social media comes in handy as well as long as, as it is managed effectively. And then in terms of parents and kids that, you know, I've heard so much, oh, I, my parents, is, I hate this one, I don't like this, they're always doing this. That is where, when I hear things like this, some, some children, they don't even tell their parents certain things, they will tell their friends, because it's like, if I tell my mom now, she'll just get angry and lash out, or she'll just ignore me. And it's like, okay, maybe, and some, they've even said that my mom doesn't even take me seriously, she thinks that I'm a baby, so like, it doesn't, they, so some parents, I guess, maybe they don't understand that as their kid is growing, there are certain things that are important to them. For example, the social life. Our social life is so important to us, considering the fact that we are in school majority of our time. You know, we spend hours and hours in school with friends and teachers. So when we come home, it's really just like maybe the dinner time, the morning time and the weekends. So our social life is very important to us. That's why it's good to have great relationships so that we can tell you anything because there are so many things that come up just as growing up as teenagers it gets crazier and crazier and you need to your child needs i just believe that your child needs to have the comfort to talk to you about these things because i feel like for our own generation the crazier things have come sooner and that is also because of the media because of tv there are things that I'm, my mom will wish you uh, but this one I've not, i didn't hear it until maybe i left secondary school so even when i was in year, year five kids were getting phones mobile phones iphones samsung's tablets I didn't get my phone till I was 13 and she had a reason for that because it's not just about, oh, the age for Snapchat is 12. It's more so, what is the mental age of your child? Because your child might be 16, but they might not be as responsible as they're expected to be at that age. And that's fine. Everybody grows at different um, levels, different extents. So it's more so knowing your child as well and explaining to them, sitting down and saying, okay, I will let you have this, but I will not let you have this because I know you, this is where we're at. And in order for you to have this, you need to grow. And even when I was in primary school, my mom did this brownie point system for me. And it was just the simplest things. It wasn't anything extravagant. If I entered the car and I wear my seatbelt, um, 50 brownie points, and that made it a habit. Wear your seatbelt when you're in the car. If I did well on the test, 100 brownie points, it was a and as the brownie points are building, at some point I'll get something or she'll buy me something. And for me, I like food, so I'm happy with that. So things like that, it's something that we had that she was using to teach me and invest like great habits in me. And um, in terms of negative self-talk, it, it actually is something that I would say it can be contributed to from the media and also from parents. I mean, um, I have a friend that she would tell me stuff and, um, once in a while and it's like if I tell my mommy this now so it's like sometimes you don't even know you may not know what your child may be going through or they might even they might even be able to tell you stuff but certain things they just aren't sure and that's why it's good to sit down and have family discussions maybe every now and then and say okay this is time for you to lay things out on the table I won't get angry and as that keeps going on you won't even need to be having the meetings anymore because your child can just pop up to you and be like oh mommy is now a good time daddy is now a good time I'll talk to you about it so it's really just um, managing social media and things like that because you don't want to have a situation where you have a two-faced parent-child relationship. Hence why sometimes in school, even I'm, I must admit, sometimes we laugh at our friends' parents because when they get into trouble in school, their parents will come to the school and be like, no, my child cannot do that. I was just laughing like, do you know your child? As in, we just find it quite amusing because it's now two-faced. It's like in school, there's something else. And at home, they're like one angel. And I have a friend who is openly, he's just openly admitted that he said hmm. when he comes to school that's where he will come and just release everything have fun if he gets in trouble he doesn't care because for some kids getting in trouble at school is not a problem because at home they don't have that freedom that they that they have in school so if they get in trouble they will risk it when we say keep quiet when you're eating in the dining hall some of them they just purposely want to shout and scream because that's the only place where they know they have the freedom to do those things and it shouldn't be like that. So you don't want it to be a situation where your child is showing another character outside and then the character that they have at home is completely different from what you know. You know, it's not gonna be a good thing. So it's more so um, peer pressure as well. The last thing I'd like to say is that that peer pressure that really shapes us, even you can't really get away from it. Um, for me, I would say the only form of peer pressure I have fallen into, but I thank God that I'm no longer in that position, was when I first joined secondary school. I was 11, um, and I noticed that whenever we would have mufti days, when you went mufti to school, everyone come in their best dressed. A lot of kids 
we'll be wearing designer brands. Like it was even, I, I mean, in my own head, I was just thinking he's going to be wearing all of that. So we're not children, but like I said before, things just, we want to grow up so fast in this generation. So it's more so a thing where people are wearing Gucci, they're wearing Prada, they're wearing Balance, Balenciaga, they're wearing, they're not even typical Adidas Nike, like they're really coming as if they're adults ready to shut down the place. And then some of me and my friends, I, I personally, at some point I was like, don't worry, when I get the opportunity again to go shopping, I'm going to get designer. But then at some point I was like, what's the point? Because this designer, where am I wearing it to? Is it just to show off to people, people that don't even care? And that's when you have situations in school where people wear fake designer and people make fun of them just because they've fallen into that peer pressure. So, and that peer pressure also for girls, especially of being involved in cliques, gossiping and things like that, you have to really try and stay away from it. And as a child of God, for me, it's more so you have to pray about certain things as well. It's not always just about telling your parents. You talk to God, your Heavenly Father, about certain things. Pray to him about it because you don't know the kind of guidance or the tip that he will give you. You know, like he threw either through somebody, either through social media or either through your parents or even the Bible direct. And these are things that you should have and establish. You know, I have a vision board. I have all my quotes, everything that I see every morning to help me as I go by. And Social media as a whole isn't necessarily bad because even for us, it's a way of, that we relate. I mean, for those of us that have TikTok, we love the dances, we love the trends. And we had a, um, an event yesterday in school called Girl Up and it's for girls only where we invite people to come and speak to us about empowering us. And when we make our presentations, you know, it's just fun that, oh, we all know the dances from TikTok. So we'll dance the dances together. So people, so it's like, okay, nobody's really excluded because this is a popular trend that everyone loves. So it all comes down to like, the extent of things are managing different things. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about the situation. Thank you. Wow, that is that is so deep. That is so, so deep. And um, I really appreciate all the perspectives Dade has um, come in with about relationship, fashion, peer pressure. And she said something very pronoun, pronoun, uh, profound, that crazy things are coming sooner. And this is a fact, some of us are denying. We are living in denial and we need to start facing it. I'm not going to comment too much because I know Boko is going to handle all those things. Thank you so much, Daddy. She also mentioned the, um, that um, when your children are going through, she, met, she, met, she talked about children having two faiths, being somebody in school and another person at home. They want to express them. So why is it that they, they are not expressing at home and be shy in why is it not the other way around, you know? So what is happening? How are we doing it? That is making that is making our children want to pretend when we are there. And this are the these are very, very important things we need to pay attention to because by the time they are 18, 19, and they start expressing, there is this, there is this woman that called me. I think it was, I think I mentioned it last month too saying that she saw her friend's daughter posted a video of her daughter. It's not even her daughter that did it, that posted it. It was a friend. And this is a pastor, pastor and pastor Mrs. daughter, you know? And they were like, hey, with all, I said, oh, no, that is the real girl that is finding expression outside. It is because you have so caged her and you have made her live your truth. And she has been denied. And so she got the opportunity at the university to express the real self. So I had to take them through that process of you need to calm down and we need to start, we, we, we're just going to help, like Daddy said, helping the children to balance all those things. But who is going to talk more about that? Um, Kamara said she has more questions to raise. Well done, Daddy. Thank you so much. That was a powerful one you have raised. And so after Kamara had, um, said has given us some of those other questions i want you to talk about daddy i want you to talk about your um the expectations what are the expectations you have so we're going to do that for like three minutes while Bokun will talk about yeah thank you um kabara um so like daddy said we spend um basically half of our lives in school. We're in school every day for nine hours. We come back and everything. So there's a problem of like values. We are very impressionable in this generation. We pick up things from everywhere. 
So if we go to school and we spend all our time with these people from different walks of life, we pick up the values from them. And if we don't have like, from the thing I've noticed from like my friends and everything, they don't have like a laid down set of values. So like in my family or we came up with core values for family in general, right? The things that we should represent when we go out there and everything. A lot of families don't have that. So they just pick up from people, pick up from their friends, cave into peer pressure and everything. And because they don't have values that they believe in and values that they should portray to people. And um, another question, coming back to like the household now, siblings, there are a lot of things that I hear about fav favoritism and everything. Um, this one is um, older, so the parents pay more attention to her and everything. There are usually two situations I hear. Parents um, paying attention to one child because the child is book smart, the child is getting everything in school, getting all the A stars and everything, and the other child is more in tune with their, their social life and like is always talking to, about their friends, is very free and everything. And then there's also the other way around. The parents are uh, being playing favorites with the one that has the avid social life and ignoring the quiet introverted one that likes staying in at home and reading and berating her and telling her about how she should go out there, she's young, she should live life and everything. So um, the question I have is how do, or how should parents balance having multiple children, having siblings, how they should like understand how every person is different, understand their children, their children's strengths, and always help them to play out on their strengths and you know improve them and everything. Whoa. Thank you for raising that because I, I honestly when I was preparing for this, I did maybe I didn't remember to put that, and that is a favoritism amongst children because this this is where sibling rivalry starts from. This is where some of those children lose their esteem. And that is why in family systems engineering, we teach understanding the personality of your children and relating with each of them as one, not as children. When you understand this child, you're able to relate to this child well in her own world, not now generalizing or comparing because that is one big issue that um, we have in families and we need to pay attention to all that. I'm sure Boku is noting that. When we had the family meeting in January, we talked about setting goals. And I remember we talked about family values, having values and um, writing it down, having things that guides us and um, the things that, gu that guide us as family. Saying that when your children now go out there, if something different is happening outside, they are able to say that, no, in my family, this is what we do. In my family, this is how we dress. In my family, this is how we talk. In my family, these are the things that we hold in high esteem. You won't be able to see another person like Daddy said, I'm sure it's a family value that make her have that perspective about when you go out, you know, when you just have school function or gathering where people now come out to throw their gushy, their designer dress and all, she's able to see herself that, is it, is it about that? And you know, so it is more about brain and um, inner beauty than the outer, outside um, beauty. That's what I can hear her say. And so when you have family values, you're able to throw all this out. You're able to leave your children and you're comfortable. You're at peace that they are okay. Like the two of them mentioned that uh, they spend most of their time, especially for those of them that stayed in the body out. Out of 12 months in a year, they spent nine months in school and just three months at home. Just three, and this three months, summer school will be there, you know, so they don't really have that complete three months, except for families that say intentionally, holiday is holiday, but I don't think we have that kind of um, 
that kind of family now because we want our child to have lesson teacher come in to do all that. So if you look at it that way, in 24 hours, they sleep eight hours, they are in school eight hours, how many hours left? You are, you are in traffic and all those things. So they spend most of their time outside. So what is it that you're inculcating in them? What are you prepared, equipping them with? Because these are the things we need to consider to raise all some children. Thank you so much, Dade and um, Kamara. So Dade, I was saying that you're going to tell us your expectations. What are the expectations? What are those girls expecting from their parents? Is that still there? Yes, I am. Yeah. So. Okay. What are the so, expectations? What are your expectations to all parents? First thing I would say, an expectation is the fact that we we would love for you to be understanding or more understanding of our personality types and also the things that we enjoy. For example. I love to dance. Um, a lot of people probably know this. And because of this, it's my mom is, she encourages me a lot. You know, she'll look for opportunities for me to dance more, to go out there, to reach my craft and even other things I'm interested in. Once I let her know that, okay, I'm trying to dive into this, explore this route, she will help me and as much as she can. And I, I really love that. Um, for example, recently I, I've just been looking at the guitar and I've been looking at it for a while and she got me one about two months ago. And it's been a fun experience as well as the fact that I'm teaching myself. So that helps it stick more. And it's fun for me because sometimes even when you um, ought to do something, when you get a teacher, they can actually take that love away. But when you explore something by yourself because you generally enjoy it, it really it adds more value, it's more memorable, you appreciate it more. And also in terms of our personality, it's more so, for example, a child might do something and we might not even see what we did wrong, whether we know we did wrong or not. The way that our parents would uh, warn us about the thing is different. For example, my mom doesn't, she's never really been someone that believes in smacking a child in general. And as a whole, besides that, she actually just does not smack me or beat me or things like that. She doesn't just hit me. And it's not because, oh, I'm her only child or she's trying to protect me. I mean, I get made fun at the school that, oh, you're a mommy's girl. That's why you won't come to boarding school. Sure, have your own opinions. But for example, for me, smacking me is not going to do anything. It's just going to leave me like, ow, like it hurts. Yes, it does hurt. But for me, like, in my head, I'm going to why, 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 why are you beating me? Like, I don't understand. So for someone like me, it's more so she would take away. I'm a very social person. I love speaking to people. She will take away my social time. She will take away my phone or she will say, okay, after this, you can't do this. You can't go out here. You can't, you know, it's like those things that I enjoy is what will be the consequences. And because I don't want to lose those things because then it will actually hurt my feelings. Then I would rather try choose to understand my, my mom's reasoning and her own point of view and then go with that. And if I don't agree, I'm free to tell her this is why I don't agree and we can talk about it and there'll be new rules, new boundaries that will be set. It's different for so many people. For little kids, for example, I have a little cousin, very bubbly. If he gets into trouble, it's not just to start yelling at him. You go and face the corner, why? Because he can't sit still. And I used to be like that, so restless. So it's like that freedom to just be everywhere is taken away. That's my punishment and it hurts more than just getting a smack. So understanding us, understanding what works for us, understanding our personalities and also caring about our interests and our friendships as well. It's more so when I tell you about this person, you are like, okay, it's not just, eh, okay, that's your own. You know, when we're able to tell you about things and you show that genuine, interesting understanding, it just means so much to us. And another expectation would just be the fact that, you know, obviously we expect you to love us and things like that, but it's more so the fact that you show it more because not everyone's parents show that they love them. You know, it's different at different homes. So, you know, we would love that, okay, sometimes, oh, how was your day? You know, do you wanna go do this? Let's spend some quality time together. And obviously people's love languages are different. For, for example, mine would be gifts. Some people is acts of service. They love when people help them out with different tasks. Some is quality time, you know, different love languages. And it's like, when we get to understand each other, you can even take the tests online as well, the five love languages. It really helps relationships because it's like, telling your children that I love you, I appreciate you more, I love that, that even they could have some kids, they get wonderful grades. I had, um, there was a girl in my class many years ago, 
this girl was like, I don't know, it was like her head was hot, so intelligent. It was like she had a photographic memory, everything. Academically, she was on top. And she got um, 56 over 16 on math exam and she was upset and was like, how are you crying? Why are you crying? You know, you did the best in the sense. Math, like, you know, math is not everybody's strong point. So for her to do that well, she was crying. Uh -uh. So that when she gets home, when we angry that why did she get 58? You know, and things like that, it really sticks with the child. And it's like, they're putting these expectations on me that are physically, like some, some, some people have even said like, our maze, uh -uh. has your mommy done that before? G guess like they just like say yeah, has your mommy ever gotten that score before? Did you ever ask her? My mom, she showed me her school records because my grandpa he keeps all his children's records. So when it's not like she told me I came first in my class. I've seen her work, I've seen everything. I saw her university diploma, everything. So it's like it's motivational for me because I want to achieve something like that. And I also understand that we're all human. And if I make a mistake, sure. But putting unrealistic expectations on our ch children and then not saying things like oh I appreciate that you did this well in school. For, the, for me, math is not my strong point, but whenever I improve my grade and it keeps going higher, my mom will say, good job, you know, well done. Maybe sometimes occasionally it treats. It makes you feel appreciated and it makes you want to work harder rather than, oh, why didn't she confess? And it's just like, but really, like I tried my best. And for a kid that loves um, words of affirmation, if you just tell your child, I love you, that's, it's made the day. So it's really just understanding us more and um, loving us more um talking to us more that's really what will create that relationship and the communication will be there so yeah those are some of my expectations thank you thank you so much jade thank you for opening our eyes to some of those expectations and i think you all took note of something she said when you start asking children why didn't you get 50, 60 over 60 and they get to school and they start saying it, their friends have another way of watering that thing down. When we were growing up, when they tell you that you cry, you want to put in more effort. Did you hear the comments? Uh, somebody said, has your mommy ever gotten that? When she was younger, did she get that grade? Why is she expecting it from you? And that is how they rationalize. That's the way they, they address some of those things we raise with them. Like somebody was saying that um, my mom is always saying, wash the plates, wash the plates. I know that we will, I will clean the sink, just hold on, you know? Just hold on, I will do it. I know that oh, a child said exactly when I want to go and do it. That's when she will now raise it. And when she now mentioned it, then I just feel like not doing it again, <laughs> you know? So say that I know what I'm supposed to do, you don't need to. So I want us to start seeing the way those children reason. They have a lot of truth contending with them outside. And so we need to know how we address and um, how, we, how we approach all of those things. So right now we are going into the parent session and we want to have Boku to take us through this process. I am going to set the pace by saying that with all the things these girls have mentioned, I'm sure some of us know that there are things that are happening in our own home, just that the way their own parents respond to it has given them this report sheet that they are proud of today. And thank you so much, Dima Wobi. Thank you so much, Ronke Adeni, Ronke Posh Adeni. Thank you for raising these fantastic children. I'm so proud of them. And I'm sure wherever you are now, I'm sure you're here, you're so happy to see your children represent well. This is so phenomenal. This is a very beautiful report sheet you're getting. And um, I am saying this because we need to start as parents, we need to start. I don't know the ages of your children. If you still have them in age four, age three, congratulations because you still have a long time. But if you have 14, 10, 12, if you have these ages, I don't know how, you can still do it, but it's going to, it means that you will start apologizing to your children to say that, see, I'm sorry I did this. And it's funny how that as parents, we forgot our own, our own growing up. We forgot that we had gone through some of those things. I don't know, maybe we are trying to deny it or we are pushing it away now wanting to raise our children the way we were raised, which will not work. And this is what we always talk about. 
are the family limits in that. You can't use the 18th century method to raise this 21st century children. And this is why we're encouraging you to take advantage of this information. I know we still have people out there on social media that will say that, what, I will beat the hell out of my child because I was beaten and I turned out right. I don't know what they used to, to judge or to weigh they are turning out right, you know? But so we are going to start and um, Boku, these children we are raising, our children are being content, they are contending with the societal expectations and our parenting method. And that is most of us are projecting. So I want us to talk about, I want you to, to respond to all those things, all those issues that the children have raised. What do you think? How can we, how can we handle projection? How can we safeguard our children from this negative societal expectations? And what do you think we can do as parents? Some of us need healing. I want you to touch about, talk about all those things. Thank you. Thank you so much. You gave me a um, really... So before you, before, sorry, before you, before you start, um, Kamara, thank you so much. You can decide to take your leave or you can just stay. Um, Jade, you can decide to take your leave. We want to have mommy and daddy talk now, which is very important. You have raised a lot of, a lot of important topics and we want to talk about this. Thank you so much for giving us your time, for spending your time with us. And thank you, Ronke and Dima and, and um, Kuchinedu. Thank you for raising these fantastic children. Thank you for giving us access. Thank you for the privilege of access to your children. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a beautiful weekend. Like I said, you can still, you can decide to stay if we are saying something that you to chat us up and to say you want to talk about it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay, so back to us. And I really want to, I don't know if um, that day is still here or if they're leaving, but I just really want to say thank you so much. And like everyone said, I appreciate your parents. I don't know Ronke very well, but I haven't spoken to, I haven't heard from Daddy. I need to hook up Ronke as soon as possible. I must say, we have all seen, this is feedback, and I said it at the beginning. So we've seen Ronke's report card, and we have seen the um, Ronke, um, the Porsche's report card, that's a family report card that Daddy has given to us. And we've also seen the movie's report card. And we can all see what it looks like. We can, you can put the grade or whatever you want to give them in your own, on your own paper or whichever we want, but you've seen their report card. And it's so important that Nowadays, I know that there's a lot of talking that we do. This is about action. We can say so much and then do something else. What are you doing? I have a few questions that when they were saying and when they were talking, I, they were coming to my mind. And I just want to pose those questions to us as parents. Forget whether you're professional, you're just, you know, forget that and answer these few questions yourself. Who is your child to you? Not your children, your child. Because we heard when Daddy and Kamara were talking about um, favoritism, individuality, the individuality of every child. Who is that child? Not your children. One of each one of your children. Who are who is that child to you? How well do you know this child? I remember when I had my, my daughter, my first daughter, and as soon as she arrived, you know that joy that God has given you a gift. I read somewhere, I heard somewhere that it said that the problem of the world is an adult. And then the solution to that, to, to that problem again is always a child. God gives us a child as a gift. The child comes to your hand as a gift, as a solution. So when the world is shouting, oh, there's a problem with this, there's a problem that God says, go and send daddy, go and send camera, go and send Boku, and they send us in. But once we get into the hands of our parents, you know, those things begin to happen. One, you don't understand who that child is. You don't know what that gift is meant. You don't know what solution. Who is your child? You might need to go back, you know, take a time travel 
to when that gift arrived in your hand? How did you feel? How did that child make you feel? Probably go back to their pictures when they were babies. Go back to just do a time travel. Maybe it will help you reignite something in you to help you understand that. Come, what has happened? God gave me a gift. God gave me this child. What have I done with that child? The other one is, what is your role as a parent? What does parenting mean to you? They've said so much about the fact that you know, things are happening faster than they would ever imagine. You think to yourself, oh, I'm a parent and I'm just going to replicate what my parents did. Forget it. You know why I'm saying forget it? I'm not, this is not just based on, oh, uh, forget it because there are so many parenting uh, teachers or people talking about parenting coaches and all that out there. It is because your parents' world is different. There was a, um, a study that was done recently and they said that, okay, when it was the time of our parents and when they were teaching, unfortunately, they didn't experience it. So they would only teach you what they know. When it was the time of our parents, guess some of the things that they were, they were um, competing with. So it was things like, oh, you must, not, you must not talk out of turn. You're in class, keep quiet while you're there. But these children nowadays, the things that they're competing with is totally different. Our parents were competing with things like, don't chew gum when somebody's talking to you. They were competing with things like oh, um, noise making in our class in those days, being destructive. They were competing with things like, oh, you're cutting the line, running in the hall, you know, dress code violation, where they'll say, oh, do this Esther and you do that other Esther, littering, you know, simple, simple things. But guess what the children of this age are competing with? They'll talk to you about it, peer pressure. Alcohol abuse, drug abuse, robbery, teenage pregnancy, assault, rape, things that in our world, social media, they are competing with, some of them are competing with suicide and many parents don't know. So the, the world has gotten to a place that it's so, so, it's gone so, so, you know, out of place that it's a different, it, we're in a different world. So you can't, our parents unfortunately did not experience that. So they, they didn't give us those tools. And based on the fact that they didn't give us those tools, what should you do? You need to get those tools. Kamara and daddy said something about values. What are your own family values? What is your family's why? I so it asked a question about what's your role as a parent and what does parenting mean to you? If I were you, after this class, what I would do is, I will try and get my own report card. We had a session yesterday, we were talking about family life and Randima said something. You give to your children a gift of observation. Do, go and do your own feedback, get a feedback form and give it to your children individually and let them come in one after the other to say, mommy, ask them questions or go and take, um, like a parenting test that will tell you the kind of parent that you are. There's so many of them online. Just do a report card first, get feedback. Let, let's even start from there. Where are you as a parent? Try and do a report card. Let them be sincere. Forget about all the, you know, let them genuinely. And if you feel know that you can't do this or the relationship with your children has gone so bad, I would advise do get a surrogate that can help you. By surrogate, I mean, People, you're wondering, yes, get a surrogate. A surrogate can be a parenting coach. If you don't want to go that far, get somebody that you trust within the family that has a relationship that can help you get information from these children. If it's gotten really, really bad, but I want to believe that it's not that bad, we should be able to ask the student for feedback. Create a one-to-one, -one. you know, like they do performance review at work. They do one-to-one -one session. Do mommy time or daddy time. Just say me and my for, me, for instance, my, my daughter's name is Timmy Tyre. So I'm going to have a session with Timmy Tyre. Timmy Tyre. You know what? Forget all the things that mommy's always complaining about your room and everything not done. Let's see. Let's evaluate what mommy has done so far. Let me get my own report card so I know where to start. That would be my starting point. And you, as soon as you look at your report card, you see that what they're telling you is not good enough. And if you have never had any parenting resource, if you've never bought anything, else, go and get it. That will be, you know, the first thing. This children have said so much. In fact, I have written an old book. By the time they were talking, I was like, come on, they were saying so much. What is your role as a parent? What does parenting mean to you? I think it's one of the resources that Dima has got, which is around intentional parenting. She said something very profound. And since that day, it stuck with me. She said, as a parent, 
you are like the elder siblings for your children. We've all come from the same source. And from that same source that we've all come from, the only thing is that you've come ahead of them. God sent you ahead to go and prepare the way for the children. So when they come, it will be a smooth ride. But what have you become to these children? We're elder siblings. We just come ahead of them. And we're meant to pave the way for them and let them have a smooth journey. But who have we become? That's really, really important. So if you think deep and look at all of this, another thing is for you to parent anyone, you can only give from what is within. You first need to start with yourself. And I don't know how many people here have, you know, done again a tr time travel to see, for me, am I truly happy? Um, who have I become? Who am I now? Because you can only give what you have. Have you forgiven your own past, your parents, the things that have happened to you? Or are you just passing on the same thing that you carried from the past into now? There are three things that at the Institute we all say that impacts on us and how and who we have become. It's the environment you grew in, grew up in. So if, for instance, I say to you, I'm sure I'm probably the only one logging in from Manchester, and I say, oh, um, oh well, I'm going to meet you at, um, um, say, Oxford Street, where you have the University of Manchester and all of that. If you've never been there, I'm sure you're wondering, what's she talking about? You can't picture it. That's your environment. Significant emotional experiences. What has happened to you? For me, one of the very, or the major significant emotions experiences that happened to me was I lost my dad at a very young age. I think I was only 12 when I lost my dad. But I want to tell you that the relationship I had with my dad kept me going. The values he instilled in me kept me. As young as I was, my dad would talk about things about AA and um, genotype. And also there were values that he left that his memories are still fresh. That's because I had a fantastic wish. I was a daddy's girl. And any time I use that as like a standard for the person I was going to marry, that's to let you know what he had instilled in me from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can go on and on about what these children have said and how we need to get back to the basics. If you're hurting, reach out. Ebo talks about um, we have an helpline where people can reach out to. Start with that if you don't know what to do. Um, at the Institute, we have things that we, the evidence-based tools that we use to help you find out your real identity. You know, the things that, that are inbuilt in you and who you have actually become now. Who were you originally and who are you now? Are you still the same original or have you lost that originality, that badge of originality, that thing that makes you authentic? Maybe you used to be someone that just used to be fun, loving and everything, but things, significant emotional experiences have come and they've you know, battered and beaten you. If you don't deal and heal from those things, you will pass it on to these children and you're going to be you know, making them become two-faced like you know, this, they, they've mentioned. You will see a different child at home and a different child in um, other places. So it's really important if we can take time, because the truth is most of these questions were saying, these children have given us the answers. They've said so much about, you know, what you need to do about them. They've given you, they've given us things about having healthy relationship. They talked about communication. They talk about how they're free, how they bond freely with us and how, you know, they are, um, was it daddy that described, said, my mom is my best friend. No fear. They, they talk to them with fun. You know, they're comfortable around their parents. So they've said so much. And I, I really don't want to be the one to, if you have been taking or you've been listening or if you've not, I think this is going to be available on um, social media and you can just reach out to us and try and see if you can listen to these things. Your child is a gift and a solution to a world. Observe that child. They mention things about the fact that each child is different. You know, the fact that, uh, was it camera that said, oh, there may be a child who's book smart. There may be another one who is really quiet. There may be another one that is outgoing. Stop comparing. The only comparison we want to give that child is to be the best version of themselves. They were this person yesterday and they have to be that person. And guess what? It is not just these children. It starts from us because if we don't have it, you can't give it. 
you can't give what you don't have because you know you're only if if this um uh, this is my um I, um, a candle odor. If what I have in this candle is water, and I pour it, obviously water is going to come out. I wouldn't expect that when I pour, it's going to it's, it's going to become wine. It doesn't happen. So what do you have inside you as a container? Who are you? What do you have? In, we need to work on ourselves. We need to first parent ourselves. You need to first get help because sometimes those things are so deep. Within. Some people are still hurting from so many. I remember that until I joined FSA, I was carrying the hurt of my, apparently, I did not find healing and closure when I lost my, because what's healing and closure in those days? You know, they just expect everybody to move on. At the, when we had my dad's um, uh, funeral, I fainted practically because it was so strange. Nobody could explain anything. And people just expect that you just carry on. And for years, I said, oh, fall sick, fall sick. And I had, you know, untreated hurts, pain that I was carrying on and on. So you might need to reach out to find out how you know you can find healing and find closure and there's so many so many ways that we can help you at the institute because this is that healing closure and is it is it's like i don't know how many courses on his own but you might want to reach out together let's remember the core values of the family your family apart from the fact that it helps to replenish I mean to you're meant to be modeling values shaping and forming the children Daddy said something really striking. She said that, you know, when peer pressure is coming from the outside, it's like we need to build the immunity of our children such that because your children will exist in the world, the immunity of the children is such that when they go to the outside world, they are so immune that the immunity within them, the values you've put in, will fight any bacteria that is out there. The things that we are having to deal with in the outside world is a lot. And the truth is, those things are like, fire they are good they can warm us up at the same time they can burn and destroy you know how fire is in seconds it will destroy everything so i don't want it to be that oh we're just running away from me how can we milk those things we'll milk it the way you can milk it is ensure that what you're stored up in your child the child knows who they are the image the identity some people about that body image it starts from the home you're the one calling your your child fat you're the one saying you're the, you're the thing you don't eat and we're all guilty of it. Sometimes I catch myself when I was like, oh, no, 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 don't compare, don't compare. But there are ways that we can make the children understand. They said they want to know why. Stop telling us to just do things. Why are you, you need to, you yourself need to understand the why. Go and do research, find out and find ways to say it to them. You know, um, the thing about, they also talk slightly, but not a lot about sexuality and, you know, crush and all of that. How are we approaching this children? Do we just say, once they come, they say, hmm, that boy likes you. Ah, never, you're not allowed to do that. How are you handling it? Um, Kamara said she's open to be able to talk to her mom about the same way daddy said, oh, her mom will be going through the books and they'll be, they, you know, the playbook to understand who is that guy. Who, those are ways that, you know, they've built relationship. These are not things that we want to keep on. We, we just want to, you know, keep in a, in a um, I don't know how to describe it. Some people have not even discussed uh, um, sexuality with their children. They've, they've, they're they leaving it to the outside world to teach them. They won't teach them anything. When I was going to discuss sexuality with my daughter, I knew that, you know, the only way I could do was I had to come from a biological angle to you know, explain to her, some girls will have big breasts, some of them will be small. You know, I was you know, going from that angle, but guess what? I even took her how to do it. And as soon as I was doing it, no long after, the, the, a friend somewhere had started menstruation. And that's how she was like, oh, mommy, I, I'm so happy you told me about it. But some of us have not even discussed those kinds. Modeling values, nurturing, growth, love, what is your own like? identity can they really identify with your family what are your tr family traditions that the children will be part will be happy to associate with there's so much that we can cover but i just want to believe that you know what the children have said is a lot that we can learn from they've said so much so so much that you know i'm not sure i, I i'm i'm going to recover from this so quickly but i just leave us with few things that i just want to mention i think there are about five of them Please, let's recommit to family. Family is our first priority. I know a lot of us are busy, you know, life happens, we need to make money and all that. But your first assignment is to your family. 
it's a castle. I, when they were asking us to introduce us, I said, I'm dialing in from the Mokwede castle. See your home as that and let it actually be a castle that you feel like when you enter the place. I am the king or I am the queen of the sky. And let your children also feel that way. When they come in, they're like, wow. They've come to a place of peace, a place where their home, everything is just working. And that's why, you know, people always say this thing, we choose our friends, but God gave us a family. So your first sister is giving you that family for a reason. Find out, you know, you teach. the second one is let's teach and live by correct principles and values. Look at what I said, teach, but at the same time, live. You can't teach what you're not living by. You might say, it, but it doesn't go anywhere. The children are not listening to us. They are watching us. Live by. Um, Danny said, uh, friends now ask about uh, their parents. Your parent that is asking you to go and score 90 something percent, did they get the 90 something? But even if they did, that child is not you. Stop the comparison. Find out and observe who is my child meant to be. Let them become the best version of themselves, not the best version of you. Let's engrave the right principle. Let them be built from within so that when they go out, they are sure beyond a shadow of doubt that, oh, I am this. They know who they are. They, they identify with the real them. They appreciate my children when they come to me and they say, my friends are there. I say, what do you say? What you say is what matters most. Forget what any other person is saying. What are you saying? Even what mommy says. Yes, I'm guiding you, but what do you say and what do you want? What you want supersedes what every other person wants or what every other person will say. Next one, reinvent time management. Parents, unrushed undivided quality time. Unrushed, undivided quality time with our children. Start with, once you finish, start one-to-one. -one. If you can't do it every day, do it once in two days, once in a week. That time is not for you to load anything. Let them come in. Let it be a time that it's just me and Timothy or whoever your child is. You and that child and tell them that this one-to-one, -one, you be in charge, whatever you want us to do. You want us to do TikTok that. If you don't know how to do TikTok that, okay. you have to find a way to communicate with these children. You have to one-to-one, -one, let them just, for my son, my little five-year-old, Timene, when he wants to do his one-to-one, -one, do you know what he says? We should be jumping around. And guess what? I just do it. What is it? I will enjoy it. So, you know, we invent time management. Don't be too busy for this show. When I finish from here, I've missed out on some time with my children, so I need to go and spend some time there. Honestly, that's what I'm going to do. So we invent time. The next one is, I talked about the institutions earlier. Uh, no, I've not. Really, so I said that. So they, they talked about the mobile phone, but guess what? It's not just a mobile phone. Because that mobile phone and social media is one of the very, you know, is very addictive and one of the very pronounced ones. The other things are competing, financial institution, the banking sector, entertainment and media is fighting for the attention. of Those are cultures that are competing with your family culture, political and, and government. And they are all sometimes outside of our control. Educational system, the court and the legal system, religion is competing for the family culture. You are so busy going, going, going. You go for this meeting, you go for that meeting. No time with your children. <laughs> Result and report card is coming. Business, work, profession, even for me, sometimes when I, with my work as being a coach, I tell myself, you can't be addressing other people when your own home is not. So we're so busy. These are competing cultures. We need to milk this institution, milk them, make the best of time. They've talked about the social media, how you can, call, how not call, you can help these children, you know, put some things in place. If you don't know, find out, reach out, people will help us. The next one is making communication a lifeline. Communication is so be, is so important. Daddy said something striking. She talked about love language. So profound. Do you know the love language of your children? Understand what they want. What is it? Is this one gift? Is this one this? And treat each child differently. Let them feel special, unique. And lastly, is, it, create a strong identity. Because a child with that identity becomes lost in the maze. They're just looking for, and that identity, let it be rooted in love. Let it be rooted in God. Let it be rooted in the things that makes your family tick. And you will see that at the end of the day, we're going to be raising wholesome, wonderful children who will be grateful that we are their parents. On this one, I'm going to stop because we definitely can't cover it all. But I just want that. That's why I'm going to stop now. Thank you so much, Boko. That was um, that was deep. Thank you for listing out all those things that um, 
Dade and Kamara mentioned, and thank you for giving us the right perspective to what we can do as parents. And um, I'm sure some of those that have always been around for the family meeting knows that we have mentioned some of those things, but we can't overemphasize all those things. Boku said something, and I also mentioned it when we started that you can't give what you don't have. And, and so some of us had been raised in a particular way. Some of us had gone through some terrible experiences that is not going to work for you if you want to raise wholesome children. And so that was when I mentioned something about projection. That is why you're angry when they raise some things. That is why you are angry when you think your child is not studying because you failed your exams when, while you were growing up. And you think one of the things that caused your failure then was because you did not read. And so when you see your child not reading, you're like, oh, he's walking towards failure. And so you project that your failure, your fear, you project it on these children. And so these are the things you, we need to start paying attention to. You can't give what you don't have. And how do you get that thing? We always mention here, we have the family system engineering course. We have the new rules of parenting coaching. And we need to equip ourselves with all this. Today, I, I brought this book to say that, um, I don't think, I don't, okay, yeah, you can see it, Out of the Box Parenting. Out of the Box Parenting is written by Praise for Wowe. It's a powerful book, and it will uncover new parenting styles and how to create a style that is custom made to deliver the kind of results you want. This book, is so, so loaded. We have said all these things and we have said that you can't give what you don't have. Can we start equipping ourselves? Can we start learning some of those things? Can we start asking for, for help? Your power is in asking for help. As if you are able to um, ask for help, then you know that you're already on the path towards healing. A lot of us need healing. And in our organization, we take people through the healing um, therapy because a lot of us have been damaged. And that's just the truth. We can get this book on, um, I'm going to drop a link. I'm going to drop a link in the chat box now. You can get the book from there. Samuel, are you there? I need you to drop the link if Samuel is there. Though I will try to drop it too. Okay, so you can get it out of the box parenting from this store online and it will be sent to you. You can also get by contacting us, we can do delivery. Okay, so I'm dropping the link. You can click on this link to get the out of the box parenting. It is also available as an e-copy. It is also available as an e-copy or you can get the hard copy. This is out of the box parenting. So all those things. We can't afford to raise our children the way we were raised. Very important. You can hear, I'm sure some of you are going through some difficulties raising some of those children. You are surprised that your child, as they are becoming teenagers, they are beginning to ask some questions or ask in funny ways, not because they want to be rude, not because you have not trained them well. No, not because you have not trained them well, but because they are becoming teenagers and that teenage has its own demand. And so the reality, the awareness that teenage is bringing to them is conflicting with what you want them to do. That age is very assertive. That age wants to be free. That age wants to do things on their own because in their mind, it is right. What that thing you're telling them not to do, in their mind, it is right. So why are you telling them not to do it? And this is why, this is how you will be able to handle those situations with the way Boku had listed those things. If you don't know, you need to learn. You need to understand their individual personality types. You need to understand how to talk. You need to understand, you can't see the truth of the matter is you can't slap your religion on them. 
they see that you're not getting results. That's just the truth. And they're asking questions. We have a lot of teenagers come to the office and they'll be like, I don't want to go to church. They say, I'm in church, I'm not clapping. They said, I mean, why will I? We are raising the same prayer point. These are realities. These are questions they are asking. They are not seeing you getting results. You don't have anything to show for it, that you are Christians. Other than going to church morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, and they see it as tiring. So if you're going to help them understand that Jesus Christ is Lord and there is God, there's a way to it. You don't slap it on them. There's a way to all those things. And those children are gifts. They have been given to you to nurture. The truth of the matter is the Bible even said it, that everything we need for life and godliness had been given unto us, has been given unto them. It's inside them. You just need to help them nurture those things. You need to help them water those things and it will come up. It is not about you. And so that's why we're saying there's a way to it. You can impose your ideas. You can impose your belief on them. You need to nurture them. And that is why I was congratulating those of you that still have younger children. And for those of us that, that our children are 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, by the time you are 18, your report sheet is, is getting ready. And so if you think, how do I trace it back? Please reach out to us. I dropped, I dropped a number in the chat box. I dropped our email address. The email address we use in sending mails to you, you can reach us via that email and you can get the book out of the box parenting by clicking on those links. And you can also reach out through that um, number that I dropped in the chat box. We also have the Super Kids book. This Super Kids book will teach you, we help you prepare your children to identify the predators, sexual predators. This is a very good book to teaching um, children, preparing your children for child sexual abuse. Very rich material, all those resources. I decided to bring them here today so that you will know that of all this. Like I said, we are not here to make you feel bad, but to embrace the knowledge, to embrace the new teaching, to say that I want to get it right. And that is the essence of the family meeting. That is the essence of creating a village. It is so hot in the room today, and I'm so happy we are able to meet ourselves at this point. And I believe that as we round up today's, this uh, month's family meeting, we are all. Thank you so much, Boku. Thank you for that beautiful session. Thank you so much for opening our eyes to the fact that um, as parents, we are older siblings and we are just opportune to be here before them to say that if we don't have, if you don't have something, we cannot give it. These are profound words from Boku. And um, I want to appreciate the families of Adeniyi and um, the families of Umwobi for raising this amazing children. Thank you so much for joining and staying to the end of this meeting. I really appreciate you. For the November edition, we are going to be treating forgiveness deep because we need to heal. We need to forgive ourselves. If you don't forgive, if you don't heal, that we can't take in new learnings. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't change. You can't live a good life. That's just the truth. You won't have peace. And if you don't have peace of mind, there's no way you can, that's why you're struggling. Some things come in easily for some people. Why is it hard for us? That is why we are struggling. And so if we don't heal, we will be struggling. Boku already said it. It is not your fault you are where you are. It is because of the way you were handled while growing up. It is because of the significant emotional experiences. It is because of the environment we have found ourselves. She has mentioned politics. She has mentioned finance. She has mentioned the, these are the things. When we started the conversation, we, we, we talked about the tension that is going around in our society. And we are saying that it's a general thing. We all agree that it's a general thing, but the way we respond to this, the 
determines how we will come out of it. And we have charged ourselves this morning that we don't need to react. We are reacting. We need to learn to respond. There's a difference between responding and reacting. Thank you so much once again for joining us. We look forward to having you in our November edition where we're going to be talking forgiveness and we're going to be having healing session during the meeting next month. Thank you so, so, so much. I was also expecting that we're going to ask questions. Boku is still here and we still have like, uh, we can still take like five minutes if you have questions. I mentioned that when we started. And if you have learned anything, I want, I want the chat box to be bubbling. I want feedback. Um, Eukarya is saying, thank you so much. It's so insightful. Thank you. Thank you, Bukola Ajayi. Thank you, Yomi. I hope to have you in the house next month. Yes, what do you have to say about family meeting? We are raising a group of people that are going to raise awesome children. We are raising group of families. We are raising a tribe of people. We are raising a tribe that is going to take over the generation. We're taking over the, we're taking over the political arena. We are taking over the education system. We're taking over the society because it starts with you and I. If you're able to raise and you're able to have a peaceful home, you're able to influence your society. Your children are able to go out there and behave well. And people ask, how did you do it? They become mentors to even their age mates. I'm sure you can hear that from daddy's um, voice. You can hear that from Kamara's voice, that in their school, in the midst of their friends, can you just imagine the kind of conversation they will be having with those girls, with their friends in their classrooms? Can you imagine the kind of um, contribution these girls will be given? Can you imagine that? And that is how it is. They are able to influence their society. They are able to influence the people around them. And that is how they take over. And that is how they're going to take over their world. That is how they're going to be the superheroes. That's how they're going to be the savior to their generation. So join us next month as we take um, forgiveness and we take healing therapy, but we look forward to your questions. And um, someone has got questions asking how okay. does daddy's mom manage our social media and i don't know if ronke is available ronke are you still here still is ronke there, here? yeah was. i think i see i can still see a a, a face i don't know oh if is that daddy daddy are you there do you want to answer this question how does your mom handle manage your social media and um, Okay. Um, in terms of social media, my mom manages it by using things like screen time. She also has like set guidelines and rules that we got to both discuss about so that it's mutual. It's not like she's just giving me a command and I follow whether I understand or not. Um, so it comes to the point where, okay, on these, at, at these days, you have more time during the weekend to use your phone, not just for homework, but also for leisure. Then during the week as well, there are limits and things like returning your phone at night. Um, so that you're not up online all throughout the night. And even in terms of things like Instagram, I don't have Instagram on my phone. It's actually on the, the iPad. So she's really the one using it. And because of the iPad, it also helps because I don't really go to use the iPad. So there's no Instagram, there's no Twitter, there's no Facebook. The only thing on my phone is Snapchat because that's what I used to talk to my friends. And then um, also just to discuss to understand the danger um, of using social media, the things to be wary of, um, and not just consuming things. You know, you should also create your own content. You should put your own things out there. You should use social media, not just for pleasure, but also to be inspired to impact other people. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think there are some yeah. apps out there as well. We use one in the house, but I can't remember the name. So it's of my head. If I do, I can share with the Institute. And if you reach out to any of the emails or the phone number there, we might be able to tell you. So the phone number that has been posted for the Institute. So we can share some of the apps that are available. So those apps are on your phone. 
and you can help them to set, like um, Daddy said, agree with them, let them understand what I, that's what I mean. So explain to them why you're setting and make sure there's an agreement. So weekends, you have more time of this. What time do you set as bedtime? So my kids, their time for bed is, is it seven? And the time that their phone gets to be opened is 7.30 because they have to be in school. They have to leave the house for 7.45. So, you know, things like that. But there are apps that you can do. You can actually view. So for me, one of the apps that we use, we can actually see where our kids are. So we know where they're what their location, except of course their phone is switched off. But so things like that will help you start from mini mini, take little little steps like that, and you know what we can share. So um, everyone, if you remind me, I'll send some of the um, the links to apps that you can use to help them. Just to you know, because you are the chief security officer in all rounds for your child. So remember that. So online is like another round of place where you have to be sure that they're secured. Health and safety of your child is in your in your is in your hands. So we'll share that. All right, we're going to share all that. And um, for those of us that just got the link to join the meeting, please, um, what we can do is just chat the WhatsApp number that was posted on the group and send your email address. And we're going to add you to the emailing list so that you have um all the things we need to share we send um we'll send the details we'll send the recording we also send the recording of our meetings to people so that you can watch again and um like daddy said her mom you know monitors all that but you know that they had to their relationship had grown in to that level before she can agree if you are not being if you don't have relationship with your children it might be tough, but you will need to be patient. And remember, you are not just saying it to instill any punishment or make them feel bad. She said her mom helped her understand. And that is very important. Let them understand the reason why you're doing this. The reason why you don't want them to spend all time on the social media. The reason why they need to know that, they need, the reason why they should watch what they say or the things they drop on the social media. Very important, very, very important. You see, that, that way they can, they will, they will obey you from a place of understanding to that, oh, okay, my mom is trying to protect me. You understand? And even the app Boku is talking about, we are sharing that app, not so that you will monitor and be a monitoring spirit kind of. You know, there's a way we can do it and it becomes so annoying to them. We don't want to do that because we are trying to bring them closer to us. We are not trying to make them um, secretive. And so we need to be able to balance all those things. And that is why we are asking register for the out of the box parenting. Please reach out to us. We'll send all those details and we'll send the details to the email. We've always sent email to all, all the contacts we have. Thank you so much once again. We don't want to hit into your, we don't want to eat too much into your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Boku. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Adeniyi. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Umobi. Thank you for raising those fantastic um, We really appreciate it. And thank you for staying up to this time. Okay, so please, for those of us that are sending the email address, let's keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. We we'll reach out to us. And so with this, we come to the end of family meeting, October edition. We love you so much. Thank you for joining. Have a beautiful week and ahead. Love you and we honor you. Everyone, somebody capturing the email addresses. Yes, yes, we'll get it. Because I think if you end this session, you might. Have you ended the recording? No, I have not. Okay.